Have you ever considered selling your house or you're just curious about how homes sell in the first place? Today we're going to be actually breaking down what to do and how to prepare your home for sale before putting it onto the market. Stay tuned. The first thing that we will be considering is the outside curb appeal of the home. The key here is to control the confirmation bias of all the individuals coming to view the property. The psychological concept of the confirmation bias as per definition, is the tendency to search for, interpret, and recall the information that conforms one's prior beliefs and values. This is the significance of why first impressions are so important. In this case, the first impression the buyer has of your property will dictate what they will focus on while they are walking through it. If at first sight the buyer believes that the property is well kept and up to standards, then this will focus their attention naturally while walking through the property on things that are well kept and up to standards. Simple as that. Of course, this can work against you. If the buyer has an immediate impression of the property that it is unkept, dirty, and needs repairs, the confirmation bias will trigger and it'll focus the buyer's attention on more things while walking through the property that are wrong with the property. Do yourself a favor. Make sure that you mow your lawn, tidy up, add some plants, make it look as beautiful as possible for those viewers coming to your property for the first time. Okay, now moving from the outside of the home and the curb appeal, we're now going to be moving towards the inside of the home and what's important, including rearranging, decluttering, and depersonalization. It is common that sellers automatically assume that they need to hire a stager to stage their property, when in reality, more often than not, they have the available furniture to stage the property effectively with the help of a real estate professional or even by themselves. The main goal is to make the property look as open and welcoming as possible. The next vital stage in the process is to declutter. Here, the goal is to make sure the home has minimal distractions that could get in the way of the positive perception of the buyer. Remember, we want the property to be as clean and as clear as possible. This allows for the buyer's imagination to run seamlessly through the home without interruption. And this brings me up to the next step, depersonalization. It may feel a little bit weird to live in your house for the time being while depersonalizing your home, but it is definitely worth it. In this phase, to make it easier for you, just imagine walking into somebody's house and seeing a picture of their grandparents on the wall, mom, dad, children, you can tell that they have a dog themselves. You see a bright pink room, a nice blue room, you can tell that's the girls, that's the boys. How difficult is it for you to now visualize your family in this house? You want to make sure that every last ounce of presence of your family is no longer existent in that home. The key variable here is to allow their imagination to freely integrate into the property. We don't want them to have to think about deleting your family from the picture and then replacing it with theirs. We want them to feel like it's their home to begin with. This is the key process to depersonalization. On this note, once we have the curb appeal and the inside of the house completely up to standards to the liking that will summon the most buyers possible, make sure to hire a professional photographer and get those pictures taken as soon as possible. The pictures are the first things that buyer sees online before coming to the property, and it is very important. The third step we're going to talk about that I highly recommend is getting a pre-inspection done on your home before putting your property on the market. Just as a side tip, Typically, once a buyer gives you an offer, they usually have it contingent on whether or not they can get a home inspection done that is satisfactory to their liking. At this point, they can break the agreement if you refuse to reduce your price or make the necessary repairs that they're requesting. And this is where your pre-inspection comes in handy. Having the pre-inspection done before listing your property onto the market serves two major purposes. The first major purpose is that when there are multiple offers on the table, there's a higher chance that the serious buyers are willing to waive their home inspection period. In other words, you have a much more firm offer than you would have if you did not have the pre-inspection done. Second, it's actually very vital for you to understand what is wrong with your home to begin with in order for you to actually make the repairs necessary before putting your property onto the market. This protects against future events that can actually make the deal fall through on your property after accepting an offer. A quick example to why it's important for you to get that pre-inspection done is when the buyer finds mold in the attic. There's been numerous cases where buyers would ask for thousands of dollars of price reduction from the seller in order to remedy the mold in the attic. Afterwards, the buyers would end up paying $100 or $200 to fix. You can save yourself thousands of dollars just by getting that pre-inspection done in the first place. Here's another tip that will save you guys a whole lot of money. Do not waste money on unnecessary upgrades to the property before selling your house. 
What you see often is people pour tens of thousands of dollars in order to get upgrades done with the thought that they can actually get their property sold for a lot more money. What actually ends up happening is that they end up adding that same amount that they've added to their property onto the sales price and the property ends up sitting for far too long in the market, depreciates in value and ends up selling ultimately for less than listed. The main objective when you sell your home is to get as much money into your pocket as possible and not waste it. So remember, if you're planning on upgrading your home as a form of investment, make sure you talk to your local real estate investor first and make sure you're not wasting your time or your money on unnecessary upgrades that could possibly give you a negative return of investment. I would love to hear from your perspective. What is the most attractive thing when you walk into a home? What really pops out to you? What is your main selling point as a buyer if you were walking into a home? Leave a comment below. Let me know what you think. Hit the like button, subscribe, and share this video with anybody you think it could provide value with. And don't forget to hit the bell notification button for tips on how to sell your property for top dollar. As usual, guys, if there's two things you can do in life, trust the process and make it happen. Good luck, guys.